All right, everybody, welcome to my third video. I have uh, training CorelDRAW X8, uh, video number three. Today we're going to learn about the text tool. We're going to learn about fonts, the font manager. We're going to learn about s inserting special characters. And we're going to learn about some objects and the word curves. So I've made this little startup screen here for my, um, for my lessons. I'll post this as the picture on my YouTube videos as well. And this is way we'll have uh, clear, decisive topics that we're talking about. Anyways, so let's get right started. I'm going to click on my screen and zoom out a little bit. I'm going to click on my text tool. I'm going to move the, the arrow over to the center here. Uh, move the object. This is, you can see these bars here are good for moving your um, text around. I'm going to click on the screen and it's going to turn into my text uh, flashing little cursor and I'm going to type in the word CorelDRAW. C-O-R-E-L-D-R-A-W. And you can see that we're using an Arial font and it's 24 points and there's no special uh, features, bold, italic, underlined. And here's where you can choose uh, the alignment, whether you want it centered or left justified, but for now we're just going to um, make this a little bigger. You can see that the same um, boxes appear and if I clicked uh, the pick tool, and I click again, I'll get my rotation tab. So you can rotate text just like you can with rectangles uh, or ellipses. And I'm going to undo that, Control Z. All right, so we have the word Corel Draw on the screen here. And you can also see that I can change the color to whatever color I want by left clicking to do the fill. And if I zoom in and I give it a right click, you can see I can do a red outline. So it, beha it behaves the exact same way as um, ellipses and rectangles. Also, um, we can do uh, you can control a lot of things um, in Corel with the the uh, shape tool. The shape tool we're going to talk about in detail later. But for text, if you click it, you'll get these two boxes that are two little icons that appear, and that controls the spacing of your letters. And if you had multiple lines, I will just type uh, click on my pick tool again. I will just type in another line, training, and you can see that now when I click my shape tool. I can adjust the, the spacing of this line. You can also adjust those in other areas as well. Under the text tab, there's a whole lot of stuff we can choose um, as well for spacing and that sort of thing. Text properties is where you'd want to click, and then you would see this pop up on the screen. And you can control a lot of different things on here, spacing between letters, spacing between lines, and all that cool stuff. So we'll get into more detail of that later, but for now, I just kind of wanted to show you how to do uh, how the how the shape tool can work with text. Um, okay, so for example, if I wanted to center this, I would click on my, or if I bold it, I click the bold button. If I want to italicize it, I click the italics, and we can choose the center, and that will center objects. So for when you're uh, manipulating text, um, you can see that you've got the font choice. I'll, if I click down here, it'll go through and show me all these awesome fonts. Let's try Artbrush, and you can see I've got a nice fluorescent pink with red outline. Let's change my outline to, to blue. That's nice and I'll make it a little bit thicker outline. These are the tools that we learned in previous videos. Uh, three, there we go. All right, so that's basically how you add fonts and add text to the screen. There's another way to add text inside objects. So we're gonna draw an ellipse here, and I'm gonna then take my text tool, and I'm gonna click it, and I'm gonna move to the edge of the ellipse where it turns into my text box. Now you don't want to go all the way to the edge because if I click that it'll actually write text around the shape. We want to write text inside the shape so I'm just going to move it to there and then click. And then you can see as, as I type, uh, as I t type, it drops, uh, keeps the text inside this box and I'll just type in some random characters and you can see what's going to happen. As it goes in it fills in this shape and I can select everything and make my font a lot larger. Let's go with say a 40 point font and you can see that it got uh, quite a bit bigger. And you can also see that there's some text missing. Um, what I mean by that is I made my font too big. I'm going to undo this. And I'm going to type inside here again the last word. I'll, I'll type Corel, C-O-R-E-L. Now, when I select everything and I choose that big font again, if I go 40 points, you can see that the word Corel is gone. But we also have this little arrow box show up with a pointy, uh, pointy arrow down. And that means that, hey, there's too much text in here, and we need to resize something to get it to fit or make something smaller. So I could type in, say, 30 points. So let's see if that comes back. There it is. So now the word is Corel is there. And then you notice that this does not have that fill, and it tells me that it's all in there. If I want it centered everything in there, I could just um, double-click on my text, select it all. And, oops, I missed the L. Select, oh, there we go. We'll start from the top and go down. There we are. 
If I click center, it centers there. If I want to add it in the center, I would just go here and click, you know, enter to center it. And you can see I've got text fitting inside this particular shape. If I resize the shape, the text stays the same size because I've set that in here. Um, when you're dealing with text on the screen like this, so again, if I click the text tool, I click and I type in the word test and I make an oval around that and I select everything. When I resize everything, test will resize as well. As opposed to resizing here, my text stays the same, my, the same size. You can see that you can actually resize it on the fly and it, it goes that way. So if you want to resize your text using the, um, you know, what by using the pullouts um, and you can manually stick stuff in, you can, or you can have it fit into objects like this. Okay, so fonts. We have um, <coughs> a font manager. X8 comes with a really nice font manager. I've got it actually running here. I'm going to click on it and bring it up on the screen. And you can see that um, we've got my fonts, and I have 9,716 fonts on my system, on my folders. And if you scroll through, there's just hundreds and hundreds of different fonts, thousands actually, of fonts. But installed, if I choose this install button, I have no fonts installed. The only fonts I have installed in Windows is the system fonts. And CorelDRAW with the font manager in X8, um, basically you don't have to have any fonts installed on your system. You just have to have them uh, loaded in font manager and then you'll have access to them all in CorelDRAW. So I'll minimize font manager and you can see when I click on the font here, I've got all of those fonts that I had in my list. You can easily just uh, search for fonts. You can type in, you can filter fonts. Um, you can hide the previews and you can just quickly it adds every single font you have specified in font manager without having the fonts actually installed in windows and that typically speeds up windows a little bit and i highly recommend installing um, not installing it it's already pre-installed but using font manager you don't have to have all of those fonts installed to bog down your system and uh, corel seems to um, work really well with that also if you import files from other people if you happen to have that font in your font folder um, it will work as opposed to giving you a font error. So font manager, um, just to access it, you click start, you go to the Corel folder, you load it, and you just basically add a font folder where you click this and I would choose a folder where all your fonts are and it doesn't have to install them to work, it just works fantastic. So font manager is great in X8, it's a feature. Uh, there was font managers and other ones, but I believe this version of Corel um, is the only version that actually will work without having the fonts installed on your system. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, special characters next, and that's, um, say you have a font like Arial. I'm just going to create a new font here, and I'll click, and we will type in the word test again. S fonts have more than just the keyboard letters on your keyboard. They have a lot of other special characters. And what I mean by that is if I go up to the text and I choose on uh, choose insert character, we get a docker that flies out on the right side and you can see all these special characters in the Arial font. If I scroll down I can choose some really weird things in Arial. Say you want to do some weird French lettering, you just click, double click on it and it adds that special character to your font line. So if you're trying to find a special character, add one, that's the quickest way to do it. It's up on the text tool, it's insert character, this flyout will open and you can go ahead and choose your your uh, character. You can see that if I drop down the font list I can choose different items and you can see there are different characters for different fonts and I could insert one of these for example and now boom it inserts the diamond shape. So that's how you um, insert special characters, that's how you select fonts. Um, with fonts you can choose to bold them, italic underlined, you, here's your font size and then of course your alignments. You can do left justify, centering, right, full justify, force justifies, and uh, that's typically working with fonts. All right, next thing we want to learn today is something called curves. For CorelDRAW, uh, shapes that you have on the screen, if they're a perfect shape, which means if, or if they're a, a shape, it'll say ellipse, or if you do a rectangle, it'll say rectangle, or if you type in text, it will say text. Um, with CorelDRAW, there's something called a curve, and a curve is basically a shape. That's not a rectangle, not an ellipse, not a, per not a polygon but just a shape. So for example, I'm going to make one quickly. I'm going to take this rectangle and com combine it with this circle. So what I'm going to do is select both objects and I'm going to choose weld. And when I click weld, you can see that it turned from two objects into a curve on layer one. Even though this has 
uh, rectangular edges. So for example, if I make a rectangle and I right click on it and I choose convert to curves, control Q is the shortcut, even though it's a rectangle, it's still called a curve. It's a little confusing. I know that when I first started CorelDRAW, stuff was called curves and I was like, why is it straight if it's called a curve? And that's just how they call shapes. So any shape that's not a, a text or a rectangle or an ellipse, is called a curve. And curve have these things called nodes. And we'll talk more, more about nodes in another video, but I just wanted to show you that um, making shapes, uh, if once it's, a, once it's a shape, it can't be edited. So here's some text, ASD, ASD. And if I convert that to curves, so I right click on it, <coughs> rather, sorry, I, if I right click on it, I will get convert to curves, control Q. And you can see now it's a curve on layer one. When it's a curve, you can do some interesting things with the node tool. If I click the node tool, you can see now I have pieces that I can fly out. And you can see I can manipulate the font to look completely different. I'm going to undo that really quickly. And you can see that when it's text and I click the pick tool, the only options I have are spacing options. So once it's a curve, you can then click on your um, shape tool and then you can get a whole lot of more features. Another thing to see with the pick tool is on perfect shapes. So for example, I have a circle and I'm going to click on my shape tool. You can see that as I move this around, it turns into a pie shape. So with the with ellipses, the shape tool makes pie shapes. With rectangles, as long as it says see, that's a curve, so that's not going to work, so I'm going to make another rectangle. A rectangle around layer one, if I click on my shape tool, uh, we can, sorry, zoom in and I'm going to as I move in, all four corners get radius corners. So with a rectangle, you can give radius corners using the shape tool. So I'll do another one. I'll do a wide one. I'll click shape tool. And you can see I'm giving it radius corners. When you do that with a curve, so here's a, I'll do a rectangle. I will convert it to a curves. So let's go to um, range, control Q, convert to curves. When I click on, <coughs> excuse me, when I click on my shape tool now, you can see that I no longer have the ability to make rounded corners, but I can move these nodes around, which makes a completely unique shape. So it's called a curve still. It says curve, four nodes. Nodes are these little dots that show up on the corners of the shape. And um, I just wanted to kind of show you that for um, con converting things to shapes. Once they're shapes, you can do a lot more with them than when they're perfect, um, perfect, perfect or rectangles or ellipses. Um, the polygon tool, let's get into that as well. Polygon, you click on it and then you can set the number of sides you want. So let's make a polygon with 10 sides. And if I scroll that out, um, I can make like a, almost like a stop sign sort of shape. And when I use, you can see right now it says polygon with 10 sides. When I click my shape tool, I can grab these nodes and I can pull them in and make all these cool star shapes or I can go out with them and, and t turn them and make these cool shapes. When it's a curve, so I'll make another polygon with 10 shape. 10 sides, I will convert it to a curve, which means it's a shape on layer one. Now when I click my shape tool, I can individually choose these nodes. They don't all change at once. So if you're having troubles trying to find um, if a shape's not giving you the nodes, just convert it to a curve and you should be able to work with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on my training video, I'm going to add, we talked about uh, the shape tool a little bit, so I'm just going to add that in here, S-H-A-P-E. Oops, I didn't want all caps, S-H-A-P, shape tool. And that way, um, I'll put that in the reference as well, and you can uh, have that there to see. Anyways, I guess that's enough for this video. Um, learning all about uh, the <coughs> learning about text, the font manager, special characters, objects, and the shape tool. We'll see you on the, we'll see you on the next one.